What up, y'all? It's your man, Abu American. Hey, you know, I was um, I was actually studying some Islam. I, I do that. <laughs> I study topics that aren't red pill related, but a red pill uh, gem just fell right into my lap while studying. And um, um, I was listening to a brother I know, nice guy. Uh, I'll put the link in the description box. His name is Abu Khadija. Uh, and he was doing a talk called The Cancer of Terrorism. And of course, he's talking about like terrorists within the ranks of the Muslims, because we do have those. You know, we don't deny it. We're not, you know, we're not in denial about that. But anyway, he was talking about, um, he was talking about how terrorism and terrorists have been a plague and a blight upon Muslims since like forever. And um, I say it all the time, and you guys know I say it, that Muslims, we've been the victims of terrorists more than anybody else. And that's not trying to pull no sympathy card. That's just real facts. And, um, you know, our blood is more beloved to them than the blood of non-Muslims. We were like a, a popular target way before, you know, popular culture made it out like non-Muslims were the popular target for Muslim terrorists. But anyway, going on, he started talking about like um, what we call the Khawadrj. The Khawadrj are like any, you know, renegade group of Muslims who go out and like start just killing people randomly. And it's excellent talk. Maybe you're not interested in but I'll link it anyway, like I said in the description box. So, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, died. And next in rulership was Ali. And um, a bunch of break-off renegades, they, you know, started going out doing stupid stuff. And Ali, you know, gathered up the armies of the Muslims and he went and he dealt with these guys. Totally routing, totally crushing them. And um, a few got away. One of them, his name was Abdurrahman. Remember, there's a red pill lesson in this, so, so stay with me. So this guy, Abdurrahman, and a few others, they escaped. They, they escaped to Kufa. Um, I believe that's in Iraq. And uh, they start the first sleeper cell. So they, you know, they laying low, and they start gathering numbers and finding like-minded people with this, uh, you know, with this ideology of terrorism and killing Muslims. So, after a while... Abdurrahman, he comes across this woman. And this woman is apparently beautiful. I don't know. Or beautiful to him. He fell in love with her. And the woman said, If you, Abdurrahman, if you kill Ali, I'll marry you and I'll love you forever. And what did he do? He took a poison blade. He, uh, after the morning prayer, he snuck up on Ali, struck him in the head with a poison blade, killed him. Let me ask you, do you know, now this is the red pill lesson right here. Do you, can you think of anything more beta, more blue pill than that? He killed, uh, he killed the, basically he assassinated the ruler, the president, the king of his time on the promise of hoo-ha. He didn't even get any. He didn't even go out with that satisfied feeling that I done emptied my cojones into a, a beautiful woman. He didn't get none of that. He just got the promise he's going to get to dump his load in the girl. And he went out and he killed the ruler of the world, of his world at that time. Can you imagine, by any stretch of the imagination, of ever doing something like that yourself right now? That is the most beta blue pill simp move that you could ever pull. Think about that. I'm going to go basically on a suicide mission. Obviously, it's a suicide mission. And kill the ruler of the known world right now. On the promise of getting hoo-ha. This guy should have studied Brifold's Law. Oh, it wasn't Brifold's Law wasn't on around back then. <laughs> well, we know better now. We know better that, you know, if you don't know Brifold's Law, Brifold's Law basically, paraphrasing is that, um, um, is it Brifold's Law that I'm using? Yeah, Brifold's Law. Yeah, like uh, the interaction between male and females is dictated by the females and the relationship between the male and female only takes place when the female can benefit from the relationship and any promise or deeds done you know for the female don't promise like any future benefit so basically like if you do something for a woman now it doesn't guarantee you anything in the future even if she desires and says, oh, I want this, I want that. And if you do it, I'll do this for you. And once you do it, that's it. Your bargaining chip is over. That's why I always tell women, you know, 
once you gave up the hoo-ha, your bargaining chip is over. It's, it, it, this goes the other way, too. You have no bargaining power once you gave up the hoo-ha. Guys, the moment you do something, you have no bargaining power. She, she ain't going to give you the hoo-ha after the fact. You got to get it before. He probably got played and didn't even realize it. He's the first simp <laughs> in the Muslim world. It's just astaghfirullah. Uh, you know, it's just te- unfortunately, it led to the death of a great man. But think about that. So I had to stop and I had to say, you know what? That's crazy. Does this still stand today? And so I thought, I'm getting my red pill lesson from something that I was looking into that didn't have anything to do with red pill whatsoever. And actually it does. Because when we look at ISIS, when we look at like, uh, uh, what was the guys back in the days? Al-Qaeda and all these other groups that were like, you know, prominent. And there is always some group that's always prominent, you know, um, the new boogeyman. The whole 72 virgin thing. Now, remember, here, now here we go. Just like this guy, Abdurrahman, who killed for the promise of something, no guarantee he was going to get it. There's no textual proof anywhere that I have seen that a person who dies in jihad gets 72 virgins. There's no textual proof Islamically. If you know of it, Muslim or not Muslim, please present it. But remember, textual proof is that proof. It can be verified. You can't just come along, I'm a Muslim and I say this. And then it actually counts. No, it doesn't work like that. You can't say, I'm a Muslim, I read the Quran. And then we take your word that it exists. No, there's a chain of narrative. It's called the Isnad. And we can follow that back and see if it's actually true or not. You can't just make stuff up in Islam and then call it Islam. So I need textual proof that this exists with the 72 virgins. It doesn't. Guys are still going out, killing themselves, dying, killing people, innocent or guilty. It doesn't matter. Killing people without any right or position or authority over the promise of hoo-ha and the promise that has no textual proof to it so dudes are still just freaking simping for hoo-ha it hasn't changed and then when we look at like syria is a classic example what were one of the things that them isis dudes did they get on long get online start talking to girls online girls in the uk mostly some German ones here and there, a few Australians, and they'd be like, oh, baby, you know, this, that, the other. And they'd like start simping out to these girls and the girls, they're suckers too, because they followed their hypergamous dream and they thought they were going to go out to Syria and get some sort of jihadi alpha guy. And it turns out that, you know, <laughs> he's just, you know, he's Joe Ahmed, the drug dealer from around the way, because that's what it turned out to be. It turned out to be like most of those ISIS flunkies in Syria were like the drug dealers and criminals of the West. And they just went there because what did they have in the West? They went to play, they went there because they they actually were somebody for once in life. That's what ended up happening. A bunch of criminals went over there and they did criminal stuff. And then women saw these young girls, oh, hot criminal guys over there doing hot criminal stuff. And because they're confused with the gynocentric West and unchecked hypergamy, they've conflated masculinity with criminality, just like we see happening in the black American community, and they went to Syria. That simping entire mentality, all of that stuff, beta blue pill mentality, it's still happening. And it's unbelievable to, that I missed this before today. I really need to crack down on my Islamic studies just like I do on my red pill studies. I mean, because it's, it's like you see things with multiple eyes now. You see it with the Islamic eyes and you see it with the red pill eyes. And it's just like, whoo, man. So dudes that are playing hard, playing tough, They're like the same gangsters on the street. It's just they're the Islamic version. It's the same thing. Pookie and Ray Ray are just now Ahmed and Khalid. There's no difference between the two. But anyway, that I thought that was interesting, man. That's something I thought was crazy. Uh, An epiphany I had. Uh, I don't think I'd I'd have seen this like, you know, seven years ago, five to seven years ago before I came across Red Pill and Red Pill Knowledge. Anyway, let me know what you think, man. I thought that was crazy. This is your man, Abu American. You can catch me on Instagram, Twitter. You can catch me on Steam it, all at Abu American. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm out.